For us, it is an honor to have you around here. Our wish is that the secrets of the sages of ancient India, taught by the renowned Yogi Sadguru, be a powerful tool of self-transformation in your inner journey. Get to know our yoga course by clicking on the link that is in the description of this video and learn more. Namaskaram. I'm sorry I made it. I was… I was saying it to only those people who thought I won't make it, so <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh. mm -hmm. Many uh, gurus who are controversial in their lifetime became great gurus after they left physically. <laughs> I thought I will also try <laughs> So, isn't it? When they were alive, uh, people were cooking up various controversies. Once they are gone, they all became great gurus. I thought, time for me also to achieve some greatness <clears throat> mm. okay uh, wonderful to be here with all of you on this day What is all this hype about enlightenment? Because there is no visible signs, there are no horns growing, there is no feathers coming up like a peacock, nothing happening. But uh, what is this glorification of this? Throughout human history, A question will always come up, hmm? That's why I thought I'll become great, but <laughs> You're already great <laughs> So, uh, what is this about? Let's understand uh, certain aspects of life process that we have either taken for granted or overly romanticized. One thing is birth. Birth happens, it's not really your choice. Maybe somebody's choice or somebody's mistake. You know about that Berkeley complaint? Don't know. No. I shouldn't start the day like this with this kind of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, two salesmen got into 
the tube or the local train in UK. The train was going from London to Berkeley. They looked at each other, both had similar bags and one had an infant baby with him also. So when they looked at each other, they knew that they're salesmen. Just the mannerisms and the bag. So, uh, the one with the infant asked the other guy, what do you sell? He said, I sell helical gears, I'm going to Berkeley. Then uh, the other guy asked him, what do you sell? He sell… I sell condoms. <laughs> oh, really? And uh, you're going on your work trip with an infant in your hand, your son? He said, no, no, this is not my son, this is a complaint from Berkeley <laughs> So, you have no much role in your birth, we don't know. Maybe it happened out of love, maybe it happened out of lust, maybe it was just a mistake, maybe it was an accident. <laughs> Hello? Whatever it is, because that's not your concern, that's somebody else's concern. So you're born. We've been saying this forever and we've been ridiculed heavily for this, Pers particularly me. Uh, when I said many years ago that as a mother shares her body with the child, the child also shares its body with the mother. Oh, what ridicule by all those textbook and WhatsApp scientists all over. Ridiculous, nonsense, does he know anything, this, that. Today, uh, many studies are showing that the child starts sharing its own cells with the mother and these cells go on settle in various parts of the mother's body, including various vital organs. This is child's way of trapping the mother that after birth she shouldn't throw it away and go somewhere. If she does this, here it must… everything must pull. Every organ in the body pulls. So this is child's trap. See, do not underestimate this unborn. <laughs> These unborn guys are not ordinary guys. They are very… they are very powerful. <laughs> they may even decide who will become the president of United States or not. <laughs> They're that powerful. So because these child cells are working in the mother's body at various levels. Even it's the most troublesome whatever, she can't throw it away because it's not her child, it's her. <laughs> this wears off as time passes, which you can see <laughs> for a female. By the time they're eighteen, almost everything is gone, if it's a girl, child. For a male, it's twenty-one years. By then, everything is gone. The physiological connect is over by then. If you remember some video I've spoken way, way back, oh, it got a, a rain of abuse for me. But uh, today, various studies are clearly showing this is what happens. And they're also saying it fades away as you become an adult.
but we have fixed a time for a female child, it is eighteen, for a male child it's twenty-one. This is why when people come and say, Sadhguru, can you bless my child? I ask, how old? <laughs> if they say they're eighteen, twenty, I said, let them come for the blessing. If they are ten, twelve, we'll bless them because this is the way life is made. This is not something that you cook up in your head. So, in a way, physiologically, do not misunderstand me. There are various other aspects to life. Physiologically, you are a parasitic life till you come to a certain point. And another parasite is just waiting for you maybe. So physiologically this is how it's made, nothing wrong when I use the word parasite. It's not that it's something negative, but this is the way life is. You can't separate from this, from that. What you think is this, is that. What you think is that, is this. But we make our choices. Which one we like, which one we don't like, which one is ours, which one is not ours. We make these choices as we go by, depending upon a variety of influences upon our life. So, uh, of course, beyond that there are genetics which lives through your life. This is actually cellular connect which fades away as you become an adult. But the genetic part stays till your last breath. So in other words, you are a just extension of generations and generations of people. And there is no real sense of individual existence, though you strive, though you struggle, whenever you try to become too much of an individual, you suffer in so many ways. If you don't, they will make sure you do. Hello? <laughs> they do, isn't it? So this goes into various ways that life wants to… When I say life, I'm talking about human life, others is a different aspect. Life wants to survive in a cluster, but somewhere deep inside, a certain level of intelligence has blossomed that it wants to be an individual. Whichever way you try, if you examine, Anything and everything that you say and do and whatever else you think and emote, it is connected to something that you gathered from somebody. Maybe parentage, maybe siblings, maybe education, maybe this, that, many things. So there is no sense of real individual, that's when you start, start doing freaky things that nobody has done till now. Nobody got pink hair. It didn't happen. So you paint yourself pink. <laughs> have you seen? Once you have hair like that, you can't do like this. <laughs> because the qualities of the bird enters you. <laughs> I'm not uh, here to comment about somebody's hairstyle. All I'm saying is, you want to do something which makes you feel like an individual. Cut this, cut that, pierce this, do this, do that, do whatever. Some people do it to their body, some people do it to their mind, some people in their behavior, some people in their emotions, variety of things. But these are all futile efforts to become an individual. If you have to become an individual, the root word for individual is that you are not further divisible, that is you are not… you are indivisible. Right now, if you take a scalpel and see, I can pick out your mother, I can pick out your father, I can pick out your teacher, I can take out, pick out your husband, wife, this, that, that, there are so many people out there, it's a crowd. Yes or no? If you are not a crowd, they won't let you back into the house today. <laughs> you become too much of an individual. That's why yogis go to the mountains because <laughs> too much of individual. 
Individual does not mean that you become an individual by sticking out. Because to stick out you need, still need a base. It is only when you become absolutely inclusive, you become an individual because it's not further divisible. There are no two, there's only one. When I say there's only one, it means in everything, it's you. It's the most egoistic, hyper-egoistic state to exist. Because in everything you see yourself, no problem, man, woman, child, dog, animal, whatever. You see only yourself, hyper-egoistic or not. You're saying yes? Okay <laughs> Oh <laughs> So, uh, because of this lack of sense of being one or oneself, somewhere, whether you're conscious or unconscious, it plays with you. So you have to pretend like you know many things. You have to gather a lot of knowledge, you have to every day be on TikTok to find out what is the latest TikTok happening in the world. Hello? You should know all this, otherwise among your friends, your family, you're a nobody. If you're not looking at Instagram, TikTok, this, that and you're up to date, yes or no? Up to, date with, up to date with all kinds of things, not the world news, all kinds of things. Because otherwise you can't be part of the crowd, you will be left out. You should see people come here, you ask them to be silent, how much struggle. Without looking at the phone, Sadhguru, no phone also. <laughs> My phone is on silent, can I use it? <laughs> because uh, you want to be a part of the crowd, otherwise you will feel lost. At the same time, you want to be an individual because otherwise you will feel somehow worthless. So this is the struggle within the human being. Most people may not be conscious, but it's happening within the family, in the office, on the street, it's happening. You want to be part of it, but you want to be above it. Now, uh, for this, you have to do many things, not one or two things. The whole circus of life is just this. You want to be the crowd, at the same time, you want to be above the crowd. Just see how many things you're doing. Just see how many things you're doing for this purpose. So this, you can call it whatever you want because I have no uh, stigma. I have not attached any stigma to any words. We can say this is a kind of a parasitic existence. Nothing wrong, I'm not saying this in a negative, you're a parasite. Everybody is at one point. Slowly we try to grow out of it. At the most, you may become financially independent. <laughs> That's about it for most people. They became financially independent means they think they are not a parasitic life. No, in every way life is made like this. To transcend that, it takes a lot. When I say it takes a lot, is it hard work? No, no, it's hard looking. Looking at everything with an intensity that you cannot imagine, then slowly, Everything that covers it burns down and then you see things as they are. This doesn't mean you know everything. This happened. An American tourist went to Greece. There the tourist guide took them to a crater, a big crater that is there in Greece. The American tourist looked down at the crater and said, Oh my God, it looks like hell. The tourist guide said, you Americans have been everywhere <laughs> So, you don't have to know everything. 
It's just that you… if you understand the way you know life right now is not everything. There is a maya attached to it. There is a certain illusory aspect to it. If you start looking at this and melting down all the maya or the illusions, for example, right now what your eyes see, it looks at different things and different people in different ways. It doesn't look at it the same way. So if you understand that this is not the eyes showing you that way, this is not the reality, this is the mind making up certain things. If you just understand this much, oh, I like this person, I don't like this person, I hate this person, I can't stand that person, it's all because of what's happening in my mind, not the way they are right now. Hello? Yes. No, Sadhguru, they are like that only <laughs> It's my mind making up all this. If you just start seeing this, no matter, I look at somebody and suddenly thunderbolt, love is first sight and then I know I am doing this. I look at somebody and I hate them and I know I am doing this, like this. Remove the maya, thinking it's real. No, it's not real, you making it up. It's your drama going on. Misdirected drama, of course, but it's drama. So if you start removing layers of ignorance like this, ignorance and illusion are not two different things. Maya, to be in Maya and to be a murkha are not two different things. If you are dazzled by illusions, then you will become a fool. Hello? Slowly you're, you will be destroyed as a life. When I say destroyed as a life, or will I die? No, that would be a fortune. <laughs> yes, because life is… see, life is the punishment, not death. Hello? When you're alive, they give you a death sentence, that's a punishment. Once you're dead, no punishment, nobody can punish you anymore. Of course, religious people will tell you, there also we will come and punish you. <laughs> it's all right, but they also have to come there, so it's okay <laughs> So it's a life which can punish you in so many different ways. What is punishment is, is like I've told you, told this to you a thousand times. If you just look back and see, when you were a child, you didn't need music, hello? You're just walking, that was music. <laughs> didn't it happen when you were walking, you jumped, huh? But now, <laughs> this is punishment. This is destruction of life. Slowly the experience of life, if not very painful, at least has become burdensome. Burdensomeness is punishment, isn't it? If you want to punish somebody, put twenty-five kilogram weight on their head and just walk with me. Punishment or no? So, life becomes burdensome because you don't see it the way it is. If life has to burst forth in <laughs> a million times over from what you were as a child, at the age of five, how exuberant you were, if internally you have to be thousands of times more than that, then you have to strip down all the illusion. 
Because illusion and ignorance are not two different things, they are the same thing. Illusion or ignorance is a consequence of illusory nature of your perception. So, uh, what should I do, Sadhguru, what should I do, is there a tablet? No, I'm saying we are moving from mantra, they, some time ago, two, three decades ago, they would ask, Sadhguru, is there a secret mantra? Now they are asking, is there a tablet, Sadhguru? <laughs> I was just a few days ago, I was in San Francisco, lot of them have tried it. Oh, it is… Uh, it's a tragedy what human beings can do to themselves, absolute tragedy. In the heart of the city, not somewhere in some slum. Well, this has happened because these are all seekers, enlightenment seekers, but lazy, <laughs> not willing to do anything for that. They want a tablet. When we announced the program Ecstasy of Enlightenment, Lord of Sadhguru <laughs> So one simple thing, the simplest thing that one can do is just become still, initially, physically, then slowly on all levels. Because all illusion, all maya is happening because of the kind of fluctuations that are happening within you, physiologically, chemically, mentally, energy-wise, reverb. If you just simply become still, it may take some time, physically becoming still itself <laughs> You must try and see. You know, those of you who are doing shunya meditation, you sit like this <laughs> Everywhere, insects will bite you, non-existent of course, but they do bite. So, this whole process, we can make it so elaborate like the yogic sciences, endless systems as to how you can work from your little finger to everything, how can we work everything in that direction, there is a whole science like that. Sciences and processes are important, when there is no any kind of alchemy, then you have to go through the whole process. But that's not the way you should do things when there is a guru around you, when there is a sadguru around you, you should just work on your intensity, rest can be done. <laughs> when I say intensity, Intensity of life comes if you don't scatter yourself too much. If you're too scattered, nobody has enough energy to do that in the beginning. Maybe someday you can be involved in every gossip on the planet and still be very intense, but not right now. This happened in a neighborhood. I won't name the city, okay <laughs> So, the wife came home and the husband was reading his newspaper. Oh, these men are always interested in news, what? <laughs> always news, news, news. So she brought her own news, you know what is happening? These Bronsons, you know, our neighbors, the whole neighborhood is talking about them. And some are on his side, some are on her side. 
Everybody is involved in this. It is like this, like that, she went on. Then the husband pulled down the newspaper and said, there may be some eccentrics like me who are minding their own business <laughs> So enlightenment means to start with, the most important thing is you mind your own business. And you start looking, what is your business? Because most of your business is of the crowd. Slowly, what is the business of this life? What does this life want? If you're part of the society, you want to buy a car, you want to buy a home, you want to buy better clothes than somebody else, endlessly it goes on. But if this life was here, simply, what is its business? You start looking at that. This is only possible if you bring some stillness into you. When you are on, you don't see these things because when you are on, every illusion looks hundred percent real. Absolute reality, it looks like that. So, taking time off a little bit, why do you think we're building all this? You think I'm going to live here for two hundred years for this… to build this twenty thousand acres? It's for you to make use of this space. to find a place where there is necessary support, energetic support and also social support where everybody leaves you alone to do what you want. Slowly work upon yourself. Why should I do all this? Well, because if you do not realize the nature, the potential and the, mag the magnitude of life, what it is, you just lived as a body, eating, sleeping, bathroom, reproduction, out. Nothing wrong with those things, but they must happen on the side. They should not become the main piece of your life. And those things were the main piece of your life when you were at a certain evolutionary scale. Now you come to a place where you have the necessary awareness and intelligence to look beyond those things. If you don't do that, nothing is lost, only life. I thought that's all you have, but you may have something more that I don't know. If that's all you have, you must tend to it. If you think you have something more, you must understand you're not at a life, you're a marketplace. You have many things to sell, many things to buy. For our use, we get many things, that's a different matter. But they should not either enhance us or diminish us. If I have something, it should not enhance me. If I don't have something, it should not diminish me. If I need it for use, it's all right, whatever it is. The question is not about to have something, have somebody or not. The question is about, is that what is determining the nature of your existence? That is a question. If that question is properly addressed, then enlightenment is just a question of intensity. If you maintain intensity, if you come to a certain level of intensity, we'll crack the egg for you. That's not very difficult. But when it's not intense, if you try to crack it, then it'll go waste. So, uh, now that I'm here once again <laughs> Ah, give me the privilege of cracking the maximum number of eggs. <laughs> you must hatch sometime, hello? Can't remain in the egg forever. You must hatch. That's when life happens. What's happening in terms of survival processes is a preparation for life. 
if you handle your survival well, then naturally you look beyond. But most people's idea of beyond is something more of what they already have. If they have this much money, more money. If you have a million, you want a billion. If you have a billion, these days they're talking about trillion also for individual people. This is not something different. This is lack of imagination because this much money made some difference in my life, now I think a mountain of it will make a lot of difference. No. You must do one thing, hmm? Tomorrow when you go to work, you must do something. You… I'm sure you have many pairs of clothes, all of us have these days. Wear three pairs of clothes, one on top of the other, three pairs of shoes, three hats, if you have wearing a hat, go to work. Yeah, because if you wear one at a time, the number of things that you have, when will you ever get to wear it? Hello? <laughs> three, just three only, okay? Because in Isha we do everything three, you know? <laughs> three pairs of clothes, three pairs of shoes, three pairs of everything, you wear and go. Uh, in the office they look at you <laughs> Whatever the illusions they have had about you, <laughs> this goes away. But instead of these things being on a hanger forever, is it not better you wear it? Hello? <laughs> so I want you to understand, Psychologically, this is what is happening, not three, you are wearing three hundred at a time. Because of that, no matter what is happening, only confusion, only burdensomeness, for most of you everything that you wished for have happened and more, but can't simply sit here. The joy and the beauty of simply being able to sit here without desiring for anything, without wishing for anything, without angst, without anxiety, without anger, even without love, simply. Very important. This is what it means to say human being. You have to earn the sep second part of your life. Otherwise, you will become a human creature. If it's all about survival, eating, sleeping, reproduction, this, that, it's human creature, isn't it? If you want to become a human being, if you sit here, you don't need anything. Physiologically, we have been parasitic life, but as a being, we are not in any way leaning on anything. If you sit here, you sit here, absolutely. Can I torture you with a… a little poem? It's called stillness. The movement of life, of body, mind and energy, we all become individuals of separate entity and existence. All life, not just human, finds separateness only in movement. I'll read that again. In movement of life, of body, mind and energy, we all become individuals of separate entity and existence. All life, not just human, find separateness only in movement. But in stillness there is oneness. But in stillness there is oneness. The stillness, the core, the movement, just the surface. Joyful expression of the surface is joyful only when rooted in the stillness of the core life. Will we become still? 
only with death or know the beauty of stillness of the core life when alive.